I'm so pleased to see so many here to honor the family, uh, to honor Judge Alba. That uh, we have a number of pieces of our prayer that we want to put together so that our time here is a wonderful celebration of life <clears throat> and also a wonderful time of prayer for our brother as he goes to uh, stand before his God. I'm going to begin our time together with a prayer. And after the prayer, the, uh, as you can see in the program, the uh, judges who are able to be present will come forward. And then after uh, the time with our judges will be a presentation of some of the uh, honors from elsewhere. And so if you would to bow your heads, and we begin our prayer. Lord our God, this day we gather before you, brothers and sisters, uh, friends all, uh, not to pray for ourselves, but to pray for our brother who you have called uh, from this world uh, to be with you. We pray to you, our God, to whom mercy and forgiveness belong. In your kindness, if you would hear our prayers on behalf of your servant, Judge Charles Ella, whom you have called out of this world. And because he has put his hope and trust in you, we ask that you command that he be carried safely home to heaven and come now to enjoy the eternal rewards that have been prepared for us. We make this prayer not by ourselves, but in union with Jesus, your Son, who stands before your throne, interceding for us, the people who carry his name. Yes, we make this prayer for our brother, through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you and with the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. We allow now the uh, judges who are present to come forward. All right. Oh, yeah, oh, yeah, oh, yeah. Criminal District Court for the Parish of Orleans is now in session. The Honorable Judge is on both of the You may have Good afternoon, everyone. I'm Benedict Willard, and like many of you, I was touched by the life of our dearly departed brother, Charles Elwa. Judge Elwa was a lot to many people. And to me, ladies and gentlemen, brothers and sisters, and to my fellow colleagues in the row, he was what I'm going to refer to as a bridge builder. There was a poem, a famous poem, called The Bridge Builder, and I was prepared to recite everything, but as we walked in, uh, Father told me that I, was only be, I would only be provided a few moments. <laughs> that was a little bit disappointing, but the way he questioned me was, can a willer be short? <laughs> Some of you thought that as well. <laughs> Charlie was certainly somebody who touched all of our lives, and to be honest with you, I don't feel worthy considering the experience that's behind me. If Judge Johnson were here, got Judge Marullo, people he's shared criminal district court for decades. He once told me, And it's all in how you conduct yourself, little brother. <laughs> that will make a difference in somebody's life. Now, the reason I picked 
the poem The Bridge Builder was because we all know that a bridge is what brings us together. My wife's a civil engineer and she's designed several bridges in life, gapping the two sides. In society today, the protests are gonna take place as they took place last night. Charlie would have been a bridge builder during these times. And in fact, he was certainly a bridge builder uh, during his tenure in life. I met many years ago during his time, I guess when he was teaching, Brother Joe McKnight from Carrollton. And Brother McKnight told me that he became a leader, he became a teacher, and the man that he turned out to be later in life because Judge Elwell was one of his instructors. I can also tell you, ladies and gentlemen, that when it came to him running a docket, the likes of Criminal District Court, the likes of the state of Louisiana, the likes of the United States, really, the judicial system, had never seen, and I'm gonna use the proper word because I don't wanna offend anybody, had never seen a brother like Charles Elwell. Right. They've got all of these judicial stories and judicial shows going on right here, right now. I can tell you that if they really wanted to know the truth, you needed to be in Section A at Tulane and Broad, and he'd bring you the truth. Whether you wanted to hear it or not, Charlie was true to his word. And one of the things that touched me the most, ladies and gentlemen, is again, I can be up here for hours to talk about Charlie. We can be in here for days as we shared stories. And I kind of came in on the short end of the stick. But in true Charlie-like fashion, let me say this right here before I get too deep involved in what I want to say. We got to give it up, ladies and gentlemen, to this beautiful sister here, Sister Kerr. The backbone to Charlie's foundation. Why do I say that? Number one, because I've been married 26 years, and if y'all don't tell my wife I said something nice about marriage, I'm in trouble. But this is where Charlie started, and in true Charlie like fashion, when you read the program, as Brother J.C. Lawrence said, he was human to a fault. He lost his way a little bit, as we all do. But at the end of the day, he ended up at 3708 Fairmont. Is that right, Ms. Perlin? All right. He found his way back. And when he got there, there was nothing but love because we feel the love in this room. So my message to you guys was going to be long and detailed, but I want you to remember this. Charlie was influential in my life when he became a drug court judge. And why did he do that? Because Charlie knew the difference, and I'm not talking about any of these gentlemen that are up here. Charlie knew that between the law and the verdict, there was something called justice. And that's what you got when you stood before him as an accused person. When he came to drug court, this brother gave more than second chances because that's what it was all about. Second chances, third chances. Some people have got more than that. And brothers and sisters, I have to tell you that I've modeled my career somewhat behind his practice. So I'm gonna say this to you. You know when you must be doing something in right, Charles was one of the people who told me that. You know you must be making a difference in somebody's life, Brother Blair, when they constantly put you in the newspaper on the front page. <laughs> you touched an entity that must have thought it was untouchable. But you gotta remember, what do you expect from a brother who grew up in the Lafitte Project, went to Booker T. Washington, and walk the streets all over the city. That's why it was so appropriate when Calvin said Charlie never felt as if, at the ballot box at least, he'd never have a problem because he was the only person to go on a 38,000, I'm sorry, 98,000, am I right? 
98,000, and as Calvin said in the paper, mother loving folks. So we're going to leave it at that particular point, Brother Charlie. But I'm going to tell y'all, he was a bridge builder, as I mentioned, between law and fact, because he provided justice. He was a bridge builder for myself, because there were times when I didn't want to participate in our en banc meetings. I was, something didn't go right, something I didn't stand for, went down wrong. Charlie would always be one to say, the brother, in order to change the game, you gotta be in the game. That's right. And that's the kind of advice he would give, not just to me, because again, y'all knew him, many of y'all knew him much better than me. It didn't matter whether you were a priest, it didn't matter whether you were a priest, a preacher, or a pimp. Charlie gave me the same time of day, and he gave me the same type of advice, and he was real with what he brought. He meant a whole lot to me, ladies and gentlemen, and that's why it was an honor on my part that we were able to put together his portrait. And we had planned on doing an extensive portrait unveiling for a public event, but for whatever reason, his illness kind of got in the way. But for those of you who'd like to see the fruits of that particular labor, Brother Caesar put together a very, very inspiring uh, Charlie L.Y. YouTube presentation. So I ask you to check that out. So on behalf of the judges at Criminal District Court, we're so thankful that we had Brother Elwa for the time being on the bench, but also as he walked the halls of Tulane and Broad. So, God bless the family, and God bless each and one, every one of you, because I know Charlie, Charlie meant a whole lot to y'all as he did to me. Thank y'all. Judges, we thank uh, Judge Willard for those fine words. There's a presentation to be given, and we have with us uh, uh, Cedric Richmond. I invite him now to come forward and to make the presentation. Uh, I will read 
the handwritten part uh, that she took the time to jot down, and that is family. Judge Elwy was a blessing to my family personally over many years, and his legacy will live on forever. A true son of the city of New Orleans. Love, Latoya. Uh, I will say as a congressman, but more importantly, as someone who Judge Elwy blazed that trail so that I could get to where I wanted to be. And Judge Willard so eloquently mentioned the poem, Bridge Building. The most important part of that poem, Bridge Building, is the fact that the person had already crossed the bridge, the creek, but he was building the bridge for others that would come behind him. And Dr. Elwa, um, the quintessential activist and trailblazer, trailblazer and pioneer, uh, that's how Judge Elwa lived his life. And for young lawyers who had no clue what we were doing when we walked into his courtroom, uh, he taught us and never hesitated to bring us back in his chains to give us not only a judicial lesson but a life lesson and what we could do and the change we can enact. So let me just end with this because this is a fitting time for a hero to go home. When the country has woken up because one knee on one neck has brought all the attention to the knee of the system that has been on the neck of African Americans for over 400 years. And so now that everybody is in the new popular day of criminal justice reform, I just want to remind everybody here that criminal justice reform started with Judge Elwa. And he sometimes got his brains <laughs> beat out by newspapers and others yes. Yes. who said that he was an activist judge, sure. that he was taking the law into his own hands that he was too lenient on the defenders. I will leave you with this because this is what and who he was. Dr. King, in his speech, give us the ballot that he delivered in Birmingham. He said, give us the ballot and we will put judges on the bench in the South that will do justice and love mercy. Judge Elwa did justice, but he loved mercy. And that's how he governed and that's how he lived his life. So may God bless you. Thank you for being here. Thank you to the family, Christian, and Dr. Elwa and his sons for allowing me just to say uh, a few words. But he was a great man, a great leader, a great role model. And Judge, I love you. Thank you. call this first part of our prayer celebration of life and now I invite those who would be reading the obituary to come forward and I'll follow it by a reflection of life uh, by uh, Mr. Lloyd Willis. The reading of the obituary. I'm Christian Elwa, the granddaughter. Um, Congressman Richmond's story was funny because I did not spend a lot of time in the courtroom, but the handful of times that I did sit in my grandfather's courtroom almost kept me out of law school because I was like, nope, 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 nope. <laughs> that is not going to happen to me. Um, much like uh, Judge Willard's kind words and the congressman's words, and those of the gentlemen of Omega Psi Phi Fraternity Incorporated, we do not have enough time. Um, to share all of my grandfather's accomplishments, to highlight everyone that he touched or impacted. Um, he was not one to share with me. He never spoke about himself or things that he'd done in the past. And so I grew up hearing those stories from others whether I was in a gas station and, you know, a gentleman checking me out at the gas station, um, saw my last name, 
and shared with me a story about how my grandfather changed his life um, when I was in law school. Uh, gentlemen that I consider distinguished law professors and had no reason to believe they'd even crossed paths with my grandfathers, likewise shared those stories, whether it's um, pictures that I saw that again, others had to tell me about those accomplishments, whether it was pictures with um, Mr. Hubbard or uh, Mr. Ike, or others that partnered with my grandfather in changing the fabric of this city. So I will take the time that I do have and uh, share with you the obituary that we've put together. Charles L. Elwa, retired Orleans Parish Criminal District Court Judge, passed away on Sunday, May 31st, 2020. Judge Elwa was born on April 6th, 1938, in New Orleans, Louisiana, the fourth of five children of Joseph and Elizabeth Fredericks Elwa. He grew up in the Lafitte Public Housing Development, his family being one of the original residences of the development. Judge Elwa's father was a Pullman porter on the Sunset Limited Railroad. His mother was a domestic worker. One of Judge Elwa's fondest childhood memories was of his younger brother and him riding the train from New Orleans to Los Angeles, California, sleeping in the bunk beds and eating in the dining car. The first train ride sparked a lifelong love of travel by train. Judge Elwa attended public schools from first grade through high school. Early in life, he understood the power of education, especially for African American males. Determined to become the first of the five Elwa children to be a college graduate, he attended Dillard University. Graduating in 1960 with a Bachelor of Arts degree in education and a minor and a major in biology. Judge Elwa taught biology and math in the Orleans Parish School System from September 1960 to 1966. In 1966, he left teaching and became the first African American in an 11 state region to be hired as an agent by the Prudential Insurance Company. He thrived in this environment, interacting with people and providing a much needed service to many persons who previously did not have access to the type of insurance he sold. However, despite his success, he was troubled by the continuing inequities within his community. Judge Elwa's love of his people and his desire to be a change agent led him to become actively involved in politics in New Orleans. In 1968, he launched an unsuccessful race for a seat on the school board. This defeat did not extinguish his fervor for change in the city's political structure. He simply worked harder to make things happen. In 1969, Judge Elwa and a close associate, attorney Robert Collins, founded the Community Organization for Urban Politics, or CUD, which quickly became one of the most powerful political organizations in the city, concentrating its work and influence in the sixth and seventh wards. Judge Elwa actively supported the candidacy of Moon Landrieu for mayor of the city of New Orleans. Still eager to serve his community as an elected official, in 1969, he ran unsuccessfully for the House of Representatives. In 1970 to 1971, Judge Elwa served as assistant to the mayor and director of youth opportunities. In these positions, he brought others into the political system, provided recreational and employment opportunities for young people, and challenged elected officials to remove the many economic and social barriers faced by African Americans and other people of color. Judge Elwa actively participated in the successful gubernatorial campaign of uh, State of Louisiana Governor Edwin W. Edwards, and from 1972 to 1975 served as assistant to the governor. Again, he brought others into the political process giving many disenfranchised persons better access to economic and social opportunities. In 1975, Judge Elwa launched his last unsuccessful campaign for public office, running for state representative in an uptown district. During this time, Judge Elwa made the decision to pursue a long, 
unspoken desire to become an attorney. In pursuit of his dream, he enrolled in the Southern University Law Center in 1976. His love of history, his power of persuasion, and his ability to connect with people served him well in law school. In the 1978-79 school year, he served as president of the Student Bar Association. His three years at Southern University Law Center further stoked his desire to help institute positive change in his community. And so when he graduated in 1979, Judge Elwa left ready to become a legal servant to the people. Judge Elwa had a successful criminal law practice from 1980 to 1996. His knowledge of the law, his ability to connect with all people, and his unrelenting pursuit of justice and equity for his clients are what made him a successful criminal lawyer. Judge Elwa was aware of the power of the court to make differences in the lives of people and believed that service as a judge of the criminal court would provide even greater opportunity for him to serve his community. This awareness and this belief led him to launch in 1995 a successful campaign for Orleans Parish Criminal District Court Judge. He was reelected without opposition for a second term in 2002. In 2007, Judge Elwell retired following a tenure of service that brought equity of judgment and provided many with opportunities for second chances, while all the while making his court accessible to the community. He had fulfilled his desire to become a legal servant to the people. Judge Elwa is preceded in death by both parents and siblings Audrey Elwa Wills, Joseph Elwa, and Harold Elwa. He is survived by his wife and constant companion for more than 30 years, Dr. Pearlie Hardin Elwa, two sons, Charles L. Elwa Jr. and Joseph C. Elwa, one brother, Wilbert Ronald Elwa, nine grandchildren, one great-grandchild, and many, many loved nieces, nephews, other family members, friends, and associates. He is a member or parishioner of the St. Catherine Drexel Catholic Church, serving as elector. He is a lifetime member of Omega Psi Phi Fraternity Incorporated. And in the words of my grandfather, I'm blessed. Charles Elwa as Judge Elwa. Some knew him as Charles or Charlie. To me, he was always Uncle Charles. I always thought I always thought Uncle Charles was invincible. I thought he was invincible until May 31st Sunday at 12.35 p.m. He seemed to accomplish anything he put his mind to. I know that some of you are thinking, well, didn't he lose a couple of elections back in the day? Yes, he did, but it wasn't because he didn't put his mind to it. I believe he did his part, but sometimes the voters don't realize don't really understand what they are getting. Case in point, look who's running the country. <laughs> Uncle Charles taught school. He sold insurance. He worked for a mayor and a governor. He became an attorney and a judge. But did you know that he could sing? Did you know that he could act? 
His portrayal of Walter Lee in a Village University production of A Raisin in the Sun would have brought tears to your eyes. And if that's not enough, he was a pretty good scrabble player. <laughs> well, needless to say, he was my biggest inspiration. I never thought about going to college until he did. He seemed to have such a great time at college, and I wanted to be a part of that, and eventually was. He taught school and touched many young lives. I taught school and hopefully touched lives. He sold insurance. You guessed it, I sold insurance <laughs> and was pretty good at it. No, I didn't become a judge, and I try not to be an amateur judge. There will be a lot of kind words spoken about my uncle today, but something some of you may not know about my uncle Charles is how strongly he embraced his Catholic faith. He attended mass faithfully at St. Catherine Drexel Catholic Church where he served as a lector. I remember that he wouldn't even think about coming to an evening family event until after Mass or Jeopardy, whichever came first, was over. <laughs> I'm not surprised that he found peace in serving the Lord in this way because judge, excuse me, judges, especially criminal court judges, see people having what could be the worst days of their lives living with the knowledge that a person over whose trial you preside could end up spending years in prison away from loved ones had to be unbearably stressful. But through the peace of knowing the Lord, he was able to rely on his faith as he strived daily to be the best judge he could be. He also utilized his faith to be the best husband, father, grandfather, brother, uncle, friend, and mentor he could be. I'm Lloyd Wills Jr., or as my Aunt Perla would say, Lloyd Jr. <laughs> Charles Elwai was my uncle, and while we will miss him dearly, I will always appreciate him. I will always appreciate how he loved us. and inspired us, inspired us to be the best people we could be. Rest in heaven, Uncle Charles, until we meet again.
boat I can be I sing because I'm free is I is on the sparrow and I know Because I'm happy, I 
the soul of the righteous are in the hands of God. And no torment shall touch them. They seem, in the view of the foolish, to be dead. And their passing away was thought in our affliction. And they're going forth from us utter destruction. For if to others indeed they seem punished, yet is their hope full of immortality. Chastised a little, they shall be greatly blessed, because God is right, and found them worthy of his sin. As gold in the furnace, sacrificial offerings, he took them to the same. In the time of their judgment, they shall shine and dart about as sparks through stuff. They shall judge nations and rule over people. And the Lord shall be their king. Those who trust in him shall understand the truth, and the faithful shall abide in him. My granddad was a man. My granddad was a man. Thank you for all showing up. Anybody who loved and respected my daddy, my granddaddy, thank you for showing up. He put the ball by the rim. You only have to tap it. Thank you. St. Catherine's direction. Where I'm from, in the years I was uptown, it was called Holy Books. <laughs> and we couldn't stand Holy Books, because I went down in the law. <laughs> we lived to beat y'all. Oh, no. Oh, no. We went to the school. I don't know what that was. <laughs> With an L on the team, how could they do <laughs> Uh, please join me in the response to Psalm, of, uh, Psalm 27. Your response is, The Lord is my light, whom shall I fear? The Lord, the Lord is my light, whom shall I fear? The Lord is my light, and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is my life's refuge. Of whom should I be afraid? The Lord is my light, whom shall I fear? When evildoers come at me to devour my flesh, my foes and my enemies themselves stumble and fall. Though an army encamp against me, my heart will not fear. Though war be waged upon me, even then will I trust. The Lord is my life, whom shall I fear? One thing I ask the Lord, this I seek, to dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life, that I may gaze on the lovingness of the Lord and contemplate his temple. For he will hide in his abode in the day of trouble. He will conceal me in the shelter of his tent. He will set me high upon a rock. Even now my head is held high above my enemy. And I will offer in his tent sacrifices with shout of gladness. I will sing and chant praise to the Lord. The Lord is my life. Whom shall I fear? I believe that I shall see the bounty of the Lord in the land of the living. Wait for the Lord with courage. Be stout-hearted and wait for the Lord. 
the Lord is my life. Shall I see? And our gospel reading is from the Gospel of John, chapter 14. At that time, Jesus said, I told you this while I'm with you, the Advocate, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, will teach you everything and will remind you of all that I've told you. Peace I leave with you, my peace I give to you. Not as the world gives, do I give it to you. Do not let your hearts be troubled or afraid. You heard me tell you, I'm going away, and I will come back to you. If you love me, you should rejoice to see me go to the Father. Last verse, one more time. If you love me, you should rejoice to see me go to the Father. Amen. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise you, Lord Jesus Christ. I suspect that you already know that, that we're over time. And, uh, I can see where Mr. Charbonnet gets the gray hair. That, uh, but a few words before we dismiss and go our way to Mount Olivet. 23rd Psalm was chosen by the family today as one of our scriptures, the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. I want to put before you a very simple reflection that occurred to me a number of years ago when I was praying this, saying, how is the Lord my shepherd? And how does he take care of me? And it just came to me in my older age that the Lord is our shepherd by the way he puts people in our lives. When you reflect on this, we don't choose our parents, do we? God chooses our parents. We don't choose our brothers and sisters, am I right? God chooses our brothers and sisters. I know there's some of us who think that uh, when you get married that you choose your spouse. But the truth is, you really underestimate the cleverness of God. No, he just is sure that you go to the right dance. Or you go to the right, the old days I would say, the right autocrat club. Or you happen to accept someone's invitation and he puts before us the person that's going to be our husband or our wife. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. It occurred to me a number of years ago that the way the Lord takes care of me is he puts many people in my lives over the years. One of the gifts of being a priest, by the way, and a pastor is you meet some of the most wonderful people in this world. Also some of the most aggravating people in the world, <laughs> to be truthful. I stand before you and I lift up that beautiful Psalm 23 because speaking for myself and I'm sure speaking for many here I want to thank the Lord our God uh, for putting uh, Judge Charles Elwa in my life. Amen. 
that uh, he's been in my life uh, for many years. That I want to give testimony first of all, of course, of that so when they say that he was faithful to his church, I'm here to give that testimony <laughs> uh, as his friend and as his pastor. He was absolutely faithful to Holy Ghost, to St. Catherine Drexel, and surprising for those who were just joking about Our Lady of Lourdes. I also saw him there at Our Lady of Lourdes when I was pastor in St. Matthias, <laughs> when I was pastor. So I just go back uh, that far. But what a wonderful time to be able to say uh, thank you, Lord, uh, for your kindness of putting someone like Judge Alba in my life. I hope as I say these words, it helps you also to say the same gift of thank you for Judge Alba as husband, sibling, as grandfather, as good friend on the midst of your life's journey. Many times uh, he was a conversationalist. I find that people raise up many parts of our Judge Awa, and I'm glad they raised up that he was a teacher, because I've met many students still uh, who tell me about his years of teaching. But I found him a conversationalist, and when we discovered that I had been ordained a priest in the Desire area, and that he knew about the time of the Black Panthers, and he knew about what most of you probably would not know, the Sons of Desire. Mm -hmm. You know, when he was telling me about uh, Governor Edwards or the Superdome, or Donald Hubbard, who was one of the many names we talked about, I realized he was a bundle of experience and information. One of my regrets that he never did write that book that I told him he should write. That he had a view of New Orleans, he had a view of experience uh, that was mind boggling. I think there was many who preferred that he didn't write. <laughs> the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. I'm here to tell you that the Lord, when he put us in this world, had a plan. Part of the plan was for us to live in this world for a while. And then somewhere along the way, the Lord would choose when he would take us to himself. The real truth is, we live two lives. We live here, and then we'll live in the next life. Uh, at a time, the Lord chooses, the world is not our home. But to live this world, in this world, is to live it to the full. I'm a great believer that our scriptures tell us that you are a fool if you don't live this life to the full. Mm -hmm. You know John chapter 10, verse 10, I've come that you might have life and have it what more abundantly. That's one of the scriptures that lets us know that the Lord wants us to live this life in a way that we get every bit of joy and happiness out of there. It's one of the gifts, by the way, of being born in New Orleans because there's a certain enjoyment of life, am I right? The joie de vie that you really have here. To live life, enjoy it, but to live life as a servant. To do the right things. Isn't that interesting? That you can live life to the full and you don't have to be selfish. All right? Mm -hmm. You don't have to be mean. Have you heard the song, If I can help somebody along the way, then my living will not be in vain. You know, this, this life is to be lived to the full. And that's why I wish that Judge Yahweh had written that book, because I really feel that he participated in life in so many different dimensions that he really lived life to the and help many of us along the way. The Lord knows that we're afraid to die. Death is not death for our God. Am I right? You know, God knows what comes after this life. So that when we close our eyes, or when he calls someone who's been part of our life, like Judge Alwa, uh, the Lord doesn't really cry tears because he knows what's on the other side. 
eye has not seen, ear has not heard, nor has it even done on the mind of man the wonderful things in store for those who love God. Am I right? In my Father's house there are many mansions. I'm going to prepare a place for you, then I will come back to take you with me. So the Lord knows that when he calls us from this world, we close our eyes and we open them up, and by golly, we're still alive. You know, we've left our body for a while, for a moment. We perhaps left some of our friends behind for a moment. But somehow when we open our eyes, there we are standing before God. I have this image as I read our scriptures that our brother, Judge Yahweh, is standing before his God right behind him are all of his friends, are all of his family, his parents. But they don't dare speak until the Lord God does his task. But they're back there giving him signals. They're giving him the signs that as soon as he finishes talking to our creator, they're going to be right there to hug him and to support him. When we go stand before God, go before him naked, except for the love in our hearts. The love is it shown in the good deeds of our life. There's one other gift that we believe that's with us as we stand before God, and that's the prayers of our friends. God hears our prayer. I know not how or by what method rare, but this I know. God hears our prayer. If you believe that God hears our prayer, then you can join with me as my prayer is, Lord, I love him, Judge Yahweh. Look kindly on him. Give him good judgment. Send the angels and saints to escort him now into the heavenly home. Forgive any frailties that he showed in the midst of his being human. Forgive him his sins. But through our prayers, grant him kindness. Let him now rest in the bosom of Abraham. It's my prayer, first of all, the thanksgiving to the Lord for allowing him to be in my life. Thanksgiving for the way and the gifts that he gave Judge Yahweh. My prayer is that Judge Yahweh hear the words, well done, good and faithful servant. Come into the kingdom prepared for you since the beginning of the world. One day when I was reading the scriptures, Jesus had been baptized in the Jordan River and he came out of the river and he stood on the bank and there was a voice that said, you are my beloved son. In you, I am well pleased. I want Judge Yahweh to hear those words from God. You are my beloved child. In you, I am well Please, another time reading the scriptures, I saw Jesus turn on the cross to one of the thieves and he said, this day you will be with me in paradise. It's my prayer that our brother, Judge Alba, hear those words. This day you will be with me in paradise. That's my prayer for my good friend, Judge Alba, because I want to hear those prayers, those words, when it's my turn. Well done. In you I am well pleased. This day you will be with me in paradise. Yes, Lord, hear our prayer for our brother as he comes before you. Give him good judgment and help us to live, to live in a way that we give honor and glory to his name. Amen. 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 We bow our heads. Our brother has fallen asleep in Christ, confident in our hope of eternal life. We commend him to the loving mercy of our Father, and may our prayers go with him. He was adopted as God's son in baptism. He was nourished at the table of the Lord. May he now inherit the promise of eternal life and take his place at the table of all God's children in heaven. We also pray on our own behalf that we who now mourn and are saddened may one day go forth with our brother to meet the Lord of life. 
when he will appear when he will appear in glory saints of god come to his aid come to meet him angels of the lord receive his soul and present him to god the most high may christ who called you take you to himself may angels lead you to the bosom of abraham receive his soul and present him to god the most high eternal rest grant unto him o lord and let perpetual light shine upon him. Receive his soul and present him to God the most high. To your hands, Father of mercies, we commend our brother in the sure and certain hope that together with all who died in Christ, he will rise with him on the last day. We give you thanks for the blessings which you bestowed upon him in this life, signs to us of your goodness and of our fellowship with all the saints. Merciful Lord, turn towards us, listen to our prayers, open the gates of paradise to your servant, and help us who remain to comfort one another with assurances of faith, until we all meet in Christ to be with you and with our brother forever. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. 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 In peace now, let us bring our brother to his place of rest. Chosen to be followed by the 